I decided to do a few videos back to the very, very basics. This would be for anybody that's starting from scratch and has never done any pouring. So I have set up um, the stuff that I purchased from the dollar store and from Walmart. And I'm going to kind of go through everything really quickly for the beginners. And this was still about 50 bucks. So it's not cheap to just get the basics, but you might could scrimp on a few things. And so I'm going to quickly go through everything. And I did get Elmer's glue this time, even though I, do ne I never use Elmer's glue in my regular pours. I got it today to try because everybody else uses it. And I really just prefer Floetrol. It's just safer to use because you, it's proven to be a good quality product. Elmer's glue is just glue. And if you want to sell a painting down the road, I'm just not so thrilled with having glue in my painting to sell. So I would typically use Floetrol. I bought five bottles of glue at $1.50 a piece at the dollar store. So that is about uh, $7 or something like that. And you can get a quart of Floetrol at Lowe's or Home Depot for $7. So I'm just suggesting you try Floetrol instead of glue. I have no idea how this is going to pour today because I never use glue. But what I did is a one-to-one -one ratio of glue to paint. And I'm using all apple barrel colors today pretty much. So I'm going to go through the colors real quickly. Uh, Laguana. <laughs> Palm leaf, holly branch, wild iris, royal violet, admiral blue, bright blue, bright magenta, bright red, and I try to get bright colors, can you tell? Yellow. Harvest Orange, and I got a big bottle of uh, white and a big bottle of black, even though I, I just have a little bit of black mixed up. So everything is one-to-one -one ratio, and then I had water, so I have my little cup here of extra water, and I've mixed everything up and added the water to get to the right consistency, and the consistency you want is kind of like warm honey pouring off of your stick. So you see how it's a steady stream. It's not drippy, like real watery. And it doesn't stick to my stick like peanut butter or, say, really thick yogurt. So it comes off in a steady stream. That's, that's what you want it to do. I have one more color that I have not mixed, just so you can see me mix it from scratch. This is one of the, the deeper green. So I've got about an ounce of paint. These are three ounce bathroom cups. So I'm adding pretty much an ounce of color and about an ounce of glue. And then I add water after I have totally stirred up the color and the glue together. That's when I add water. And I did mix up my whole big 8-ounce bottle of white. I, I mixed it all up, so I've got some in a cup and some in a 12-ounce squeeze bottle. So I got the squeeze bottle at the dollar store. It's very flimsy. I have an Amazon link below my videos that has better quality bottles than these. They have this, these dollar store ones have this big wide opening. The other squeeze bottles I have on Amazon are... Um, they have a finer point at the end of it, and they have screw-on lids. They're a sturdier plastic, and they do not leak at all. So I prefer those, but I wanted to show you this totally for a beginner's pour, just so you could have an example of how people start with, with the really basics. And um, I'm using puppy pad on the table, which... I got a 14 pack of puppy pads for about four or five dollars, but you can use a dollar general, um, 
any dollar store plastic tablecloth, which you know is usually about a dollar. You can use that to pour on, and actually the paint will peel off of it pretty easily. So there is the consistency that I want. Creamy, but still running off my stick in a steady stream. That's the right consistency. I also mixed up some metallics, which are going to be in a separate video. Rose gold, antique copper, those are folk art. And then these came from Dollar General. They're crafter's closet, gold, and silver. The silver is nice. The gold looks pretty bland. But so does, so does the rose gold from Folk Art. It looks pretty bland, too. I'm not impressed with the metallics, but that will be a different pour, so I'm going to move those cups aside, and I'm going to use black probably with that and do something... And yeah, I got the stir sticks. Uh, these are like craft sticks. There's two, two of these packed together for about a, a buck at the dollar store. Yeah, I got the three ounce cups to mix all of my paints in. Uh, these are three ounce bathroom cups. Got them at Walmart. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use for sales. It's called OGX is the brand. Coconut Milk anti Rakage Serum. It is a hair product. It comes in the hair section at Walmart, some drugstores, maybe Target, and if, if it all else fails, you can order it online on Amazon in my link below. The key ingredient at the beginning of the ingredients list is dimethicone. That is what you want. Okay? So with OGX, this bottle will last you a year. It, it just goes a long way. You only want, I'm not going to push down totally, I'm just going to slightly press and do a drop in each cup. It's hard to squeeze it and get just a drop. You can also, you can also unscrew it. It smells wonderful. And you can drip a drop off the end of the, dri the dripper thingy, you know, the squeeze thingy. You can do a drop that way. I'm not. I'm actually not putting any in the black or white. It smells so good though. And then I'm going to just stir a few times, not many times, just a few. And every so often, I wipe my stick off. If Sometimes I'll share the sticks between the colors, but you want to share them in like colors that are you know, similar to the other color you're using. And if it's not close to the color, then wipe it off or get a clean stick to um, stir the next color. Because you don't want to dirty up your color with another color that does not work with it. Like, I can put the yellow into the green because that's going to go away, like, immediately. And, um, so I'm just making sure I stir the OGX in a few times. That's all. I am doing this from home because we are heading out of town today to go on a camping trip. And I don't have my paints and my setup from home here anymore since I have my studio. So this, I'm doing it on my kitchen table again. And um, I've got, I'm doing it with my cell phone. So I'm not sure how the quality will be. I'm not sure if I'll be in focus because I've got my phone kind of in a precarious spot right now. Ooh, that OGX smells good. Okay, so I'm going to remove my puppy pads. I, like I said, I had to buy glue. I bought um, a pack of dollar gloves. So they're probably, they're probably made larger, and they are, so they're loose on my hands. I like to have nice, tight gloves, but these are loose because they're just, they were just like a four pack of gloves that were at the dollar store. Oh, and I also got six canvas panels. 
So here is, uh, I got eight by tens. And I think these are 11 by 16 canvas panels, which typically, if you um, put too much paint on them, they will warp. But the thing about the warping is if they warp, once they're totally, totally dry, you can kind of bend them and manipulate them again to get them straight. You can place a book, you know, put maybe like a piece of parchment paper down over the painting and then a heavy book and let it sit for a while. And also if you just put it back in a frame that's the correct size, then you will, you'll be able to um, straighten the board back out. I'm back for the third experiment. I'm doing Elmer's glue and apple barrel paint for an experiment to do basics for beginners. I do not prefer Elmer's glue. I prefer Floetrol. I bought about five bottles of Elmer's glue for about six or seven dollars together and I could have gotten a bottle of Floetrol at the, the uh, Lowe's or Home Depot stores for about seven dollars. I could have gotten a quart. So to me it's well worth getting the flow trawl. But I've got my stuff on a puppy pad. I've got drips and things. But I'm just doing different color combinations. Trying out this glue formula which I do not care for. Uh, the paints are super thick. This next one I'm going to do I think I will do I'm going to do the a little bit of the warmish tones, but in the reddish. So I'm going to do a little bit of the deeper, the deeper purple that's reddish. I'm going to layer this. So I'm going to pour it into my cup. You pour it in like you're pouring a soft drink or beer into a cup. You angle your cup and that helps it layer up instead of going into your cup like a dirty pour. I'm going to do pink. Got a bunch of orange, so I'll do a bunch of orange. But I'm going to have to switch off some yellow. I'll go back to red. orange, top it off to the brim with yellow. So I have a full cup here. Uh, let's do, what I'm going to do is that it has silicone in it. I'm going to pour it in the center. I'm not moving my cup, I'm just pouring I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna wiggle back and forth just to change this up. This is typically like a tree ring. So I'm gonna wiggle it just to get some variation. Now I'm going to circle it around like a tree ring here at the end with this purple at the end of it. I'll do one little drip there. I didn't mean to, but anyway. Okay. So. So this is going to have cells because it has the OGX in it. I was just blowing to see if I could make any cells pop up. I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes. I've got one big cell right there. That's funny. You can also, you know, kind of drop it on your table a little bit. That also releases air bubbles. 
Of course, I've got these sitting on cups because I don't have canvas, so they're not, they don't have push pins underneath like I typically would do. So I'm just trying to keep them on top of the cups. I'm going to go ahead and tilt. I'm not going to wait any longer. Now I'm going to come back this way. So I like that pretty well. That way the, whoops, dripping. Don't drip on top of your canvas, that's a no-no. That's why I don't like bigger gloves. I like the fitted gloves because they're very loose on your fingers and you can't feel things. So I'm trying to remove the paint. I want to stick my finger in, but I don't want it to make a big mess. dip my finger in and get that orange spot out. But the cells are going to continue to grow as it dries. But I like the colors. It's like very soft and kind of like um, cosmic looking. Like a cosmic deep sunset sky picture maybe. I don't know. What do you think? Hopefully you can see these. So I'm, gonna shift, I'm shifting it just a little bit. What's happening this purple color? I'm going to get some on my glove here. Go over this orange at the end. All right, I'm going to leave this. I don't want to shift too much and ruin what I got. It's a little thin here on the corner. So I'm just sticking some paint back on. but um, And I don't like what I did here. So what I'm going to do is take my straw that totally did not help Trying to make it look like it was meant to be. I'm going to tilt some more because I don't like that spot there. Hopefully tilt it off. Okay. I'm done. Done with this one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you.